Okay, what we're doing this morning is um, there's a few knots out in this floor. And of course, I have to do something with them. Now, here's my plan. I've never tried this before, and I don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to take some scrap wood and a jigsaw, and I'm going to cut some knots out that are relative to the size of this. Slightly smaller. Um, this is underneath the kitchen cabinets, so it's an experiment. Then I have some deep pour epoxy that I'm going to tint a brown semi-transparent color and pour around that knot. And then when I sand it off, I'm hoping it resembles a knot somewhat anyways. Um, these are really bad right here, but again, they're, they're underneath the cabinet, so it's not going to be a big deal. If it doesn't turn out, I'm going to have to figure out something different. I didn't want to waste big wide boards. I had knots out, and I love the knots, so I want to try to preserve them. So that's the plan. This is a two to one mixture. Now keep in mind I've never done this before. So this is an experiment.
Okay, here it is the next day, and uh, that was a failure. The uh, epoxy seeped out all around. So, what I'm gonna do is caulk around the outside of this thing and see if that will then hold the epoxy. Okay, I poured them full again. We'll see what happens this time. I'm mixing sawdust in the epoxy. I'm having trouble with it running out underneath the boards. So I'm hoping this will thicken it. And not let it run out so much. Also, it gives it a little texture instead of just clear. There's a lot of spots on the floor where the knots were just not solid. And I like th this spot right here I'm showing you right now. That's where a squirrel chewed it. And I don't want to cut that off of the board. I wanted to save it. I wanted to keep these boards wide. But there's a lot of spots where the knots were just not solid. And I filled them in with this epoxy and it worked pretty well. I was pretty happy with the end result.
Here I'm filling in all the screw holes. Um, I used a combination of caulk and wood filler and different colors of caulk to blend it in as best I can. I also didn't really film it, but we caught, I caulked all the joints between the boards. Um, I didn't have the luxury to let this wood sit inside as long as it should have. Um, and I had some shrinkage. Um, so I, what, we, what I did is I caulked, and again I used a combination of colors of light caulk and dark caulk and I mix it together to get something in between and it worked out pretty well you'll see in the end how it worked out this is one of them cases where it's got to look a lot worse before it looks better This right here, I'm just sanding with a belt sander a uh, couple of the spots that I had filled with the epoxy. I just wanted to see how it was coming out. We're not going to do a whole video on it, but Mrs. W is uh, putting polyurethane, waterborne polyurethane on all the wood. So just so people know, a lot of people have been concerned about that. She is doing it right now. That stuff is... Uh, the same stuff we're going to use on the floors because it's it's meant to be on floors as well so right now we're getting everything ready for the sanding pretty soon we'll be sanding I know the burning question and pretty much most everybody in the Western world and some in the Eastern world. Does Mrs. W wear flip-flops in the winter? And survey says she does. But she wears toesies. Isn't that silly? Nope. What I'm doing while I'm waiting for the main floor to do what it's going to do as far as shrinkage or anything like that and patching in all the different spots before I sand it is I'm going to start doing this bedroom floor. So I'm just going to continue on with what I've been doing.
Once again, you'll notice the expansion everywhere. You have to have expansion on a floor because if it ever gets wet or the humidity gets really high, it could actually buckle the floor if you don't have expansion. You have to give it expansion. having trouble is places like this where the knot is not really out it's just got a lot of voids in it and there's no real way to cross it so i figured putting the sawdust in there will thicken it up and maybe even if i had to do a couple of layers that it would pull it back and not too fast and, and that works as well Some people are going to ask why I would put a board in with these cracks and imperfections. Um, I have plenty of wood. I don't. It's not a question of that. I like that. The imperfections I will fill with epoxy or something, and I just I really like that. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Would you put this board down? Just drop a comment and tell me yes or no, you would or wouldn't.
gonna last long. The head on this planer um, is not a solid blade. It's it's a series of small blades. And they're dull right now. So what I have to do is take each one off and turn it. And and you can get four four turns out of this. Well, three turns out of this, counting the original four, um, out of these blades before you have to replace them. I've already done it once. So I've got two more times I can do it. But there's like a hundred of them on there. So it's a long, slow process. I marked this so I know which one I'm starting at because I think there's four different rows of these. I'm not going to bore you sitting here watching a hundred of these things being switched, but it took a while to do it. Look at how crooked this board is, and that's why it, it's really hard to run it through the planer when it's like that. But I was able to cut pieces out of this flooring and make it work, and it was beautiful.
going. We take our sawdust over to Janine and she uses it for bedding for all her animals and chickens and birds and ducks and what have you. We also use it in our chicken coop, but we've only got seven chickens, so we don't need near as much as she does. There's all the ducks doing a duck walk. I think it's feeding time. Yeah, we're just finishing up the boards that we had. Not all these boards are flooring, but we just figured we'd plane them and get them ready anyways. Now I'm starting on the middle bedroom. I didn't show as much of this because it's all the same kind of. Okay, I went over the floor once, ended up going and getting the drum sander. The plate sander just wasn't aggressive enough. So I went over the whole floor with 60 grit. It's looking really nice. Now I'll go over it with the drum sander again with 80 grit. And then we'll go back over it with, with the uh, plate sander for the final. So it's looking really good. Mrs. W likes to show off her can, I guess.
give it all away that was tough don't know why i just don't Okay, so there we have it. That's uh, three coats of poly on the floor. Got some really interesting knots and stuff. And was very successful where I filled with epoxy. They just look like knots now. So I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Now I got to run the bottom board all the way around the whole room. There's going to be no baseboard, so. So here's the middle bedroom. The closet, I put down some skinny boards in there because it really doesn't matter, it won't be seen too much. And it was a way to get rid of some boards that I had. There's the end bedroom. Again, same thing with the closet.
always cut an angle on that bottom board. It makes it a lot easier to go into place. So here we are, um, the floor is finished in all but the music room which is filled with wood right now so we can't. And the bottom board is put on around the house, the main room. So I'm going to end the video here and thanks for watching.